Big impact on the Australian economy. As I said at the start, nominally only 500 businesses are supposed to be paying a carbon tax, but we all know that it's going to have flow on effects. What does this mean for your average business? What do they do in terms of how they make pricing changes? And what are the consequences for them if they get it wrong? Well, the situation here is very different to what it was in 2000 when the GST was introduced. Many of you here will remember that when that came into place, there was a very strict and a very specific set of rules about how to deal with matters. And at that time, it was a, almost a mathematical and arithmetic exercise. The wholesale sales tax goes out, the GST is applied, and here is the resultant price of products that they should be. And the ACCC at that time was given a very specific brief to look at businesses that moved their prices beyond what the new price should be once the GST had been taken into account. The carbon price mechanism is a completely different creature because first of all, it's not a mathematical exercise for most businesses. It's a much harder one to work out what impact it's going to be. 500 big polluters very obviously are going to pay a direct cost, but there will be flow on effects. Some of the flow on effect areas, electricity, estimated that there's going to be about a 10% increase by most reckoning uh, in cost of electricity for most, most parties. But how does your average business work out if there is a difference, is their prices going to change, and if so, what can they tell their customers about it? Well, this time around, we've taken a, a very different approach, and the rules that we're using to apply to this are, in some respects, a lot simpler for your clients. And it's basically this. Businesses have always been free to move their prices up and down as they choose to do so, and that hasn't changed at all. However, if you want to move your price up, and you want to say that it's due to the carbon price, then you need to have a reasonable basis for having done that. If you move your business, if you move your prices up and you just say to your customers, I'm moving up because the general cost of goods has gone up or my general costs of operating have gone up or I've just reviewed my prices and decided to increase them, not a problem. Doesn't concern us. On the other hand, and we'll give an example here, for example, of a restaurant. If a restaurant decides that they want to bump all the prices of their menu up and let's say they do it by $5 a, a plate, and when someone turns around and says, what's it for? And the waiter says, well, it's all due to the carbon tax. Well, you can bet your bottom dollar that someone, either a competitor or a customer, will ring us up and ask, are they allowed to do that? And is it, is it legitimate? And the answer is, you have to show us that it really is worth $5 plate that you've made an impact on. Very subtle difference but a very important one. Businesses that raise their prices and do so without saying that it's due to the carbon price, there's not an issue because it's generally, generally allowed to do that. If however you say it's due to the carbon price and you can't say, you can't show how or why it is, then you fall into that provision of misleading and deceptive conduct because you're potentially deceiving your customers about why the prices have gone up. Any questions about that at this point? Please. What yeah. If I, what if a client combined both of those and said, uh, I'm raising my prices because of general costs, including the carbon tax? That'd generally be fine. In fact, there's an example we're given here. We use a couple of examples. One's, for example, a veterinarian who looks at it and goes, well, prices have gone up. Some of it is due to the carbon price. This is a little bit half minute to calculate, so I'm just going to say that my prices have gone up full stop. Other people who say, well, it's a variety of factors. Um, including carbon price but other things as well, that's okay. The ones we're really concerned are about the operators that, you know, extreme example, someone bumps their prices up by 20% and says, it's all due to the carbon tax. Well, we'd like to know how you got, how you got that figure because that probably at first glance is not going to be the, the true story. There's another question there at the back. Yes. Electricity prices in different states are um, regulating a different mechanism, either through the states. Each, most of the states have an energy regulator. And there is also, at the national level, a body called the Australian Energy Regulator. So but if they were to make that statement, you know, we've shipped that price above more than 50% a day, um, just using the carbon tax. Electricity prices actually move up through a variety of different mechanisms and um, I'm not an electricity expert but I do know this, that one of the issues about electricity has been there's a carbon price issue for them and in addition to that many, um, many, reg many 
electricity supplies over the years and recent years have also been increasing costs to make up for things like capital investment and a variety of other factors. The main thing that electricity providers though have is that that's where most businesses will work out what impact a carbon price will have on them because they'll be able to get their electricity bill. Electricity is one of the things that for almost everyone will go up in one way, shape or form and you'll be able to see directly on your bill that it's gone up. Hmm. I'm, yeah, look, I've got to be really frank about this. That's not my, not my direct area of expertise. So I really can't comment on it much more than that. Other questions? No, if I just bumped them up, that's a commercial decision you want to make about whether or not I can survive with a 20% increase. Fair enough question. Look, from where we sit, we're very much like the tax office in the sense where both the ACCC, the tax office, the ASIC, a number of other bodies, all independent statutory regulators, not subject to direct or indirect control by government. And for, as one of the seven commissioners on our agency, we're very, we very much make the point of, so sort of saying, we make the decisions, we've got this set of laws, we'll apply them. So our mind has been, carbon prices come in, these are the laws we've got, how do we interpret them? Um, and, you know, I'm sure there'd be politicians that would love us to say, make a lot more noise about where we go to, but we're very clear about this is the law and that's the only bit that we're concerned about. Other aspects, that political dimension, we'll leave, it, we'll leave that one alone. Fair question, though. 